So in this example, we're going to take a look at how to rebuild the opening shot from the last GenArt Sapphire demo reel. We get lots of emails, phone calls, and posts to forums asking how it was done. So luckily we've been given the source footage. I'm going to take you through how to rebuild this in After Effects. I've got my clip loaded in here on my timeline already. And as you can see, as I play this back, the girl turns around. As the camera pans in, she goes ahead and hits the play button. And what will happen here is we'll get all these nice, really cool, organic sonic radio waves to come out. So to create these waves, we're going to use a combination of a couple different Sapphire plugins. We're going to use mainly Feedback, as well as Warp Bubble. And then we'll actually use those to drive another Sapphire plugin, which is called Distort Chroma, which is really going to give it that nice finished look um, when we're done comping everything together. So before I go ahead and go any further into this, I want to thank the person who originally did this footage, and that's Tim Crean. He is a flame artist, visual effects supervisor, and co-owner of a facility called Suspect in New York City. So I just want to quickly give props to him and mention his website, suspect.tv. You can go there, check out all the cool work they do. They do a lot of high-end commercials, music videos, and design projects. So thanks again to Tim for giving us this footage. And now we'll go ahead and rebuild it using Sapphire plugins inside of After Effects. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get some tracking data out of this. Because you can see here, not only does the box boombox move, but the camera moves as well. So it's not staying on a steady X and Y plane. And as we create our radio waves, we want to make sure we can move those around in, uh, in accordance with, this, with the boombox. So it's at about a frame 75 when she first hits the boombox on. So what I want to do is move to frame 75, which I already have. And I'll go ahead and start by tracking some motion. So I'm going to click on track motion. I'll grab my tracker point. And I'll move it pretty much to the center of the stereo speaker on the right-hand side. And we'll make sure we track the raw data. So we'll go ahead and analyze that. So it's nice and quick. So now we have one of the channels. Let's pop back now to frame 75. And let's go ahead and do the same thing, but for the other stereo speaker. So we'll track motion again. We'll grab our tracker point. We'll move it over to the left-hand speaker and put it again in the middle of the boombox. We'll get the raw data. And we'll analyze that so it's nice and quick. So now we have some basic X and Y movements. We go ahead and start applying the radio waves uh, and a couple of different Sapphire plugins to this to make sure they move in conjunction with the boombox. So now that I've got my tracking data, I want to go ahead and actually create a new solid here. And we're going to do that by going to the uh, layer menu, going to New and Solid. And I'm going to call this Radio Wave 1. Radio Wave. One, and we'll go ahead and save that. It's just going to be the same size as my comp, so it's 960 by 540. So we've got our radio wave one. We'll make sure we're viewing that. And what we'll do is go ahead and apply a radio wave plugin. That's actually a built-in plugin inside of After Effects. It's in the generate category. So we've got that on here, and I'll apply the radio waves. So when I go ahead and hit play, you can see it's a fairly generic, um, symmetrical radio wave pattern, but it's a, it's a good starting point. And from this, we can start applying some Sapphire plugins to really give this some additional volume and distortion to it. So within the radio waves, I want to change a couple things. I mainly just want to start adjusting the color and make that white. Uh, that's because whenever we're using a lens input for a Sapphire distortion plugin, which we'll be doing with this, it's always good to have the base color as white. Uh, you get a lot of uh, a luminance variation, and I'll, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So I've got my, uh, my color to white here, and now I actually want to go ahead and make sure I sync this to the boombox tracking data we've already got. So to do that, I'm going to open up my radio waves and my tracking data. So I'm going to go to my motion trackers. I'll go to tracker 1. And remember, I want to be on point frame 75. And I'll go ahead and start track, copying and pasting my track data, my feature center for my track point. And I'm going to paste that onto my radio waves. When I go to my effects, you'll see radio waves. And you got what's called the producer point. So it's important here we're also at frame 75. So the uh, keyframes will match up with the original track and keyframes. So I'm going to paste that, and you can see now as I play this back, those radio wave center points are moving in conjunction with the uh, boombox as that tilts around. So we're almost done here. There's one more thing we need to do, and that's actually um, start the radio waves at the right time. So I found it's a little bit tricky to control this plugin, so I've done a little bit of uh, playing around ahead of time. And I find if you actually go to frame 70, keyframe the opacity to zero, and then move to frame 71 and keyframe the opacity up to 1. You'll find you're getting a pretty close result here to the boombox uh, volume being turned on and the waves kicking in. So you can see that there. So now we've got our basic radio waves coming out of this boombox here. You can see as she uh, 
walks down the street, there's nothing going on, but when she hits the boom box, the waves start coming out. So there are a couple of things we want to do on, on top of this with some Sapphire plugins. As I mentioned, these radio waves are a great starting point, but they're very symmetrical, sort of generic. So we can use some Sapphire plugins to really distort these and give it uh, some nice sort of organic, natural looks to it. So the first thing I want to do is use a Sapphire Warp Bubble effect, and that's in the Distort category. So I'll go ahead and I'll apply the Sapphire Warp Bubble. So you can see it's doing this bubble distortion on the radio wave. And it's a bit much at first, but you really don't have to mess around too much with the parameters to get a really good result. Uh, this is a good time to mention that with, with most of the Sapphire plugins, in fact, I'd say with all of them, we can give you a lot of control and a lot of different parameters. But if you're in a limited time crunch or you're just trying to get something done quickly, I find almost all the time the most important useful parameters are, are almost always at the top. So this is a perfect example of that, where I have my amplitude and my frequency, and those are the only things I really need to adjust here. Uh, the amplitude is just how, how, how intense is the distortion. As we take this down here, you'll see it's much more of a subtle distortion, much more of a, of a mellow type of distortion, not as obvious. So I find usually at about 0.16 is pretty good. And uh, the frequency, so how often does this bubble ripple occur? Again, as we start taking this down, you'll see it's less and less frequent. And if I start dialing this down, so about four there, go ahead and type in four. You can see again, it's a much more subtle, sort of soft, organic look. So it's still doing this nice distortion or this warp bubble to the image, but it's not as harsh as the initial result was on this particular shot. So when I go ahead and play this back now, you see you've got a bit more of an organic looking bubble going on, uh, some movement to the radio waves. So we got, we got a pretty cool start here. So what I also want to do is start filling in these gaps here. And to do that, I can use a Sapphire Feedback plugin. And Feedback is just going to simulate camera feedback. So again, I'm going to go back to frame 75 here, where we're starting. And I'll apply the Sapphire Feedback. So I'll go to my Effect tab, I'll go to Sapphire Time, and click on Feedback. So I want to actually go ahead and turn off my, um, my Show Transform here. This is that widget for the controls. I prefer to work without it in this particular example. So I haven't done anything yet, I've just applied the feedback, and now as I play this back, you'll see you're getting this nice fall off between the radio waves. And what I actually want to do is give it a bit of a stronger look. And to do that, you can go to what's called the Combine option, and it's going to average it by default. But if we go ahead and switch that to screen, it's basically going to do a screen mode and overlay the previous frames on top of each other, so you're getting a much more pronounced look to it. So when I go ahead and play this back this time, you'll see you're getting much more preservation. And you'll notice there's a little bit of skipping here uh, with some of the Sapphire Temporal effects because they all do, are doing alternate frame access. Inside of After Effects, it's best to, uh, to flush the cache and reset that um, before you go ahead and render. So uh, we'll do that in one sec, but there's one more thing I want to do here. And you can notice that the feedback is, is moving um, at a center point that's not really in line with the boom box. So the feedback previous transform XY here, you can see center XY, uh, has got an XY position, which is great because we have this producer point data that we've gotten from the, uh, the tracker, which I believe is still in my last copy move. So when I go to my previous transform, and you see I've got center XY, I can actually paste that same data we got from the original track. So the feedback is going to move in line with the stereo. But again, we have to make sure we're on frame 75. We want to be on our starting frame here. And I'll click on that, and I'll just paste that. So now you see the feedback is moving in tune with the uh, with the boombox with the initial tracking data, so it's much more of a of an organic, natural sort of look to it. So we've done pretty much all we need to do for the radio waves for the uh, right channel of the boombox. Let's just do the same thing quickly for the left channel. So I'm going to go ahead and we called this one radio wave one. Let's go ahead and make a new solid. Let's actually turn this one off. And let's call the new, new one Radio Wave 2. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid. And I'll just call it Radio Wave 2. And we're going to do the exact same thing as before. So I'm going to go ahead and start by going to the Generate category. I'm going to apply the Radio Waves. And I'm going to just go ahead and change my color to white. I'm going to take my Start With to 5. And I'm going to start keyframing the, uh, the opacity. So I'll go to frame 70, set the opacity uh, to 0. Go to frame 71, and set the opacity to 1. 
And lastly, we'll go ahead and we'll make sure our XY data on this producer point is the same as the tracking data. So we'll go back to our original shot. And we want to make sure we look at tracker 2 this time because this is, again, the tracking point for the other, the other stereo channel. So we've got our feature center. I'll just move to frame 75. That's where we started doing the tracking. I'm going to go ahead and copy that data. And I'm going to go to my radio wave 2, and I'll go to my producer point for the radio waves. And make sure, again, you're on frame 75, so we'll paste that. So now we'll get the same sort of result where the waves are coming out and they're tracking to the uh, boom box as that boom box moves around. So we've done that on this side. And now we just need to, again, repeat the same Sapphire plugins we had going on before. So to do that, let's go ahead and start by adjusting the Warp Bubble plugin. So let's move there. We can see a couple of the different waves generating here. We'll go to the Sapphire Distort category. I'm going to throw a warp bubble on there. I'm just going to use the same values as before. So for amplitude, I had 0.16. And for frequency, I had 4. And I'm going to apply the Sapphire Feedback plugin on top of that. So we can see here, I've got the uh, nice bubble distortion going on. And again, we want to fill out the ring, the gaps in between the rings. So we'll go ahead and we'll start adjusting, or so we'll apply the Sapphire Feedback. So I'll go to the Sapphire Time category. I'll apply feedback just as I did before. And first thing I'm going to do is turn off the show transform options. And we'll take the combine new option to screen. And we'll make sure we're on frame 75 because we also want to cut and paste the data from our uh, tracking data to our center XY in the previous transform option. So I'm going to go down here to feedback. I'm going to go to previous transform, center XY, copy and paste that. So now we'll get the same result with the nice feedback going on as this moves around. So now we've got our radio waves for both sides. And we can just pre-comp these two elements here, these two radio waves, and use these as a mat to drive our uh, just distortion plugin. So We've got both of them turned on. You can see we've got our radio waves generating here. It's going to take a bit of time to process, but that's okay. We'll get to that later. So I'm just going to go ahead and pre-compose this right now. So I'm going to go to composition, sorry, layer, and pre-compose. And we'll call this, we'll call it radio lens, because we're going to use this as a lens for our uh, Sapphire Distort plugin. I'm going to move all the attributes into this composition. I'm actually going to go ahead and, oh, I think I forgot to select both layers here, so we'll make sure we select both Radio Wave 1 and 2. We'll pre-compose that. We'll call it Radio Lens. Make sure all the attributes are moved into that comp. So now we have Radio Lens. Now I'm going to move that behind my, or below my source clip and turn my source clip back on. So now we've got our nice radio waves, and again I'll just refer to those really quickly here. We've got our radio waves that are being generated and being tracked. So we're going to go ahead now and use these to drive a Sapphire Distortion plugin. So I'll go back to my Sapphire, to my source clip here, and I'll apply the Sapphire Distort Chroma. You can see it's giving me these nice chromatic aberrations on the uh, on the source clip, but they're all over the place. They're they're working off the luminance of the source clip. But what we can do is actually go ahead and feed it a lens. So that's why we spend all the time creating these uh, radio waves. When I go to my lens pull down menu, it's going to allow me to select any layer in my comp. So I'm going to go back to that radio lens we made. And now you can see this starting to come through here. So as those waves emanate and move as we track them, you can see it's now uh, using the Sapphire Distort Chroma plugin to really filter these, give it some nice chromatic aberrations as we play through. Um, I think the amount of distortion here is a little bit high, but as I was mentioning with the, uh, with the warp bubble, most of the Sapphire plugins have your, your most important controls at the beginning. So I can just start to dial this down, turn down the amount, so it looks like more of a, a distortion like what I'm looking for, something a little bit more subtle here, not so over the top, and maybe even turn that down a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And uh, maybe turn the blur lens down a little bit too. And I can see how that looks. Or if I want, I can turn the blur lens up, which is gonna smear out that even more. In fact, in this case, I think I like to Turn it back up. We'll leave it pretty close where we had it at the beginning here. So now this is going to take a sec to process out, but as I scrub through this here, we'll just pick up at right around frame um, 60 or 70 or so before she hits the boom box. 
you can see uh, if you follow, if you're following along, when she hits play here, these nice chromatic aberrations are going to come out based on the radio waves that we created using the radio waves plugin as well as the sapphire warp bubble and distort and uh, sorry and feedback. So we're going to give this a sec to, to render out, and we'll take a final look at it and move on. So I've actually gone ahead and rendered this out in QuickTime, so we can jump over to QuickTime and take a look at this clip start to finish in real time to see how the final result looks. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and feel free to experiment more with other Sapphire plugins going forward.